met someone for the first time just now, how long will it take you to size up this person and come up with a first impression? Many people will tell you that it would take them at least a minute to come up with something. But in reality, they do it faster than that. Scientists have found that it only takes a tenth of a second to develop a first impression of someone based solely on his body language. In fact, you do not need the person to talk to read into the individual's personality because psychologists say that only about 7% of our communication is done orally. The more significant proportion of the conversation is done using nonverbal messages and vocal cues. If the majority of the communication is done using the physical body language, how will you know whether you are reading into the language correctly? You need reliable tools and techniques to help you analyze behavior a little easier and with more accuracy. Behavior Analysis Techniques Below are techniques you can use to analyze the behavior of a person you meet or are in close contact with. Read from the Emotional Energy Emotions are an excellent expression of the energy or the vibe a person is giving, and you only register these emotions using your intuition. For example, it will feel good to be around some people because they bring an improvement to your vitality and mood, while some people drain your emotional energy so much that you will want to get away from them immediately. You will sense the emotional energy when you get to a few inches or feet from a person. To read a person's energy, use the following strategies. Watch the person's eyes. The eyes are powerful transmitters of energy. Science indicates that just as the brain transmits an electromagnetic signal that extends beyond the body, the eyes have a signal too. Therefore, whenever you interact or are about to interact with people, be careful to observe their eyes. Do you sense anger, aggression, peace, attraction, or meanness? Does the person appear guarded and hiding? Sense the person's presence. Our bodies emit overall energy that surpasses behavior and words. This energy is the emotional atmosphere that surrounds a person. As you read into the energy that the person is transmitting, see whether the presence is friendly. Does it attract you to the person or do you have an urge to back off? Listen to the laugh and the tone of voice. The tone and the volume in a person's voice will tell you much about their emotions. As you read into a person's behavior, notice how his or her voice affects you. Does the tone soothe you? Or is it snippy, abrasive, and whiny? Notice the touch, the hug, and the handshake. Physical contact acts as the wire that completes an electric circuit. Does the handshake or hug the person gives feel comfortable, warm, and confident? Does it off-put you so much that you want to withdraw? Is the hand clammy to show anxiety, or is it limp, which indicates timidity or a lack of commitment? Behavior Analysis Tools The following are scientific tools used to study and analyze behavior. Observation Observation is the process of attentively and carefully watching for, listening, and studying the subject in his or her natural environment. Behavior analyzed using this method is studied either directly or indirectly. Direct observation is the process in which the practitioner himself watches the subject, while indirect observation is the analysis of behavior that is dependent on the report of others who have been observing the study subject. 
you conduct direct observation analysis of behavior to look for data that could develop and support the hypothesis you have regarding particular behavior and its triggers. You must observe when the behavior in question occurs, what triggers the behavior, the antecedent behavior, how the behavior you are studying plays out, and how other people around the subject respond to the behavior, the consequences. Direct observation. Direct observation is the basis for conducting various behavior assessments and evaluations. By observing the subject directly, the observer gets to learn about the behavioral traits, weaknesses, strengths, and special characteristics that a person might have. Anyone who is exposed to the subject will observe behavior using this direct method. However, you must conduct this observation in a way that the subject will not know that he or she is being observed. The presence of an observer could lead to a change in behavior in what is called the Hawthorne effect. Functional direct observation takes place when an observer gathers enough data that can answer the question asked, such as to understand why a person behaves the way he does, the stimuli that trigger particular behavior, and the action that can be taken to cause a change in behavior. For example, if you notice a child mimicking the body movement of a person living with a disability, such as a limp, you already have established the environmental factors that should change to reduce or cut down the child's behavior. For example, counsel could greatly help by helping the child to understand the reason behind the limp and the reasons the child should not start limping unnecessarily. Play-based direct observation. This method of observation is done in circumstances that involve the formal and informal behavior of the subject. The behavior the subject exhibits in regard to his or her communication, social and emotional behavior is observed. For example, you could stand at the counter at the store to see how the cashier interacts with the customers in his natural element. By observing how the employee treats the customers one by one, you will be able to establish a pattern or style of interaction that the person uses. Indirect observation methods. Indirect observation is a technique through which behavior that happened and was recorded in the past during an event, a conversation, or any other encounter with a study subject. Since it is an account of what another person observed directly, the material used in these methods are transcriptions from audio recordings of some words that were said in a natural setting or directly from the words the interviewee will say. It may also include other additional items that would increase the relevance and more details of the events described. All the material used makes for a rich source of information to study behavior exhibited daily. These information sources are also growing every day, courtesy of the technology advancements that are making recording, dissemination, and storage much easier. Narratives are an excellent source of reliable second-hand information. However, the source of information should be viable and objective. The ABC chart. The antecedent behavior consequence, ABC chart, is a tool used to assess and gather information about behavior that evolves into a positive behavior support plan. The antecedents are the behaviors a person exhibits before conducting the behavior. Behavior is how the subject of the study holds himself or herself. Consequences are the responses or the actions that follow after the behavior. The ABC method is sometimes considered to be among the direct observation methods 
because the observer has to keep an eye on behavior as it occurs. This method is applicable only for when a person is free and can observe behavior. It is taken up when an observer is available at the specified times to make observations. The method is personal and time sensitive. While it is important to think about the antecedents and the form of behavior, the focus of many is on the consequence portion of the chart. Examine this portion when you want to identify the responses that increase or decrease. For example, if giving someone attention increases his problem behavior, then it is only wise to teach the individual to seek that attention in a better fashion or to use the attention just for positive behavior. If escape from a difficult task is a typical reaction in the consequence section, then the appropriate course of action is to either change the task or to ask for help completing it. The response you give, however, should focus on increasing the chances of having the desired behavior, promoting replacement behavior, and decreasing the frequency of occurrence for the problem behavior. One of the important things to do, however, is to understand the consequences or the responses and whether they will increase, decrease, or maintain the current responses. The scatter plot. The scatter plot is a tool used to collect information about a problem behavior at specified intervals throughout the day. The scatter plot is useful for determining whether behavioral problems occur at the same time of day, at predictable times, or not. The information collected using the scatter plot is useful for identifying the right intervention method and to determine the routine of affecting the methods. The scatter plot is a grid with the time variable plotted on the vertical line and divided into various times. For example, the time interval between the markings could be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or one hour each, depending on the time it took to conduct the study. The horizontal line indicates the designated days during which the observations were made. In a functional behavioral assessment, the scatter plot supports direct observation to identify the times when the specified behavior occurs. One advantage of this grid is that the number of measurement categories can be used to indicate the frequency of durations, frequency counts, and the latency recording. For example, another way to make the recordings is to use a particular symbol to indicate the low rates of occurrence and a different symbol to indicate the high rates of occurrence. You could also indicate the exact number of times that the behavior was observed into the cells. The disadvantage of this tool, however, is that it does not give the observer an opportunity to indicate the consequences and the antecedents that he notices, which means that the observer will need to indicate additional recording in his assessment. Record Reviews Record reviews are excellent for observing and analyzing the subject's behavioral and psychological reports recorded in the past, which provides critical information about an individual's social skills, possible setting events, academic problems or strengths, and issues that have to do with the quality of life. The old behavioral support plans will indicate to you the trend of problematic behavior and the intervention offered, pointing to the methods that have succeeded in the past. Looking at abandoned behavioral support plans will tell you of the types of intervention methods that failed and could not be a good fit for the person to whom the method is to be implemented, or even for those that are implementing it. It is also possible for a person going over these reviews to come up with information that describes a setting where the study subject experienced success and did not take part in the problem behavior. The kind of records to be reviewed using this method include psychological records, mental health information, 
individual education or family service plans, old behavior support plans, and allied health provided assessments, such as the results of occupational, speech, and language therapy. Accessing this material requires special permission, and the observer needs to maintain confidentiality in regard to the number of people that can obtain this information. The advantage of using record reviews is that this method is quick and easy to complete. Completing the assessment early will give the team adequate time to consider the variables that could be affecting behavior, especially those that may not be obvious. A disadvantage of this method, however, is that the materials that are reviewed may not necessarily indicate the current state of the subject. The behavioral support plans of the past may not be targeting a person's childhood behavior, and using them to analyze behavior today may not reflect the person as he or she is today, whether a teen or an adult. In addition, this method is not as objective as other methods like direct observation. However, combining this method with others like direct observation will enable you to conduct one of the most useful assessments because you will be able to trace the trends and the origins of behavior, and you will have a clue about the intervention methods that have been used in the past, whether successful or otherwise. Interviews. Holding interviews with key people helps to determine various perspectives and concerns that others may have in regard to the study subject. For example, if you are unsure of the character and behavior of someone you had hoped to do business with or to marry, you could ask unbiased people who know the person whether he or she would be a suitable candidate for whatever you intend to do with them. Interviews also help to identify the events that are associated with the occurrence, or lack thereof, of the behavior of interest. For example, if a teacher reports that a student has been engaging in unfavorable behavior in the classroom, the teacher should be called upon to participate in an interview so that he or she can offer more information regarding the same. However, the teachers who may have a different opinion because the student does not indicate the said behavior in their classrooms could be called upon to offer their insights too. The student too, the parent, his friends, and other people who may provide useful insight to the study are also called upon to provide answers to the questions asked. In the end, the responses collected are used to determine the triggers of the said behavior based on the direct evaluations made by various parties in the subject's life. The information derived from this study is used to understand the reasons behind the behavior portrayed and to establish possible methods of intervention that could help the student behave better in school during all the learning sessions. It also becomes the basis for eliminating various triggers of negative behavior.